Hi good people, it's Amy from Saber Salvage Scent and I hope this finds you well. For those of you who are new to the channel, thanks so much for stopping by. This mostly focuses on all things perfume and fragrance related. And uh, to those of you returning, thank you so much for uh, continuing the conversation and teaching me and um, making this fun for me. So if you haven't yet, I hope that you'll consider if you enjoy this video, um, giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel by clicking the red subscribe button. It really helps me, uh, my channel grow and for me to stay in touch with you. So carrying on, today's topic I said I would talk about Jasmine, one of my favorite, favorite, favorite notes and perfumes. And honestly, when I look at, you know, if I were to look at my top 10 or 15 perfumes or my first loves, a few of them had Jasmine in them. So it's just kind of like part of the, the love that I have for perfumery. Um, I thought first I would just say, um, for those of you who are not familiar, there's a woman named uh, Victoria who has an incredible um, vlog and blog and is a perfume writer and a perfumer. Her site is called uh, Bois de Jasmine. Um, and I highly suggest you uh, subscribe and she's just wonderful, but I thought I would click down below um, or put down below the link to, she has a specific vlog about uh, ja Jasmine, and, which is very, very interesting. Um, I'll just say a few words. Uh, one of the things that, I, I know that Jasmine can be polarizing for people, but honestly, I think what makes it polarizing for some is what makes it wonderful to me. I think that it is such a versatile uh, scent or note. Um, it can be really, really fresh. It can be almost green or lemony or tart smelling at times. It can be super, super um, lactonic, creamy, almost buttery or milky. Um, and it can even be super funky and dolic, and I'll talk a little bit about what that means if you're not familiar. Um, it can be really animalic and funky and wonderful as, as um, kind of giving base to a perfume as well. So um, jasmine, as far as the flowers, um, of course it can be uh, created as a fantasy note as well and through chemicals. Um, but grown naturally, um, there are two kinds. There are jasmine grandiflora and jasmine sandback. Um, jasmine grandiflora is what is grown or commonly known in, um, grown in grass, France. Um, it's also grown in Egypt and India, um, and I'm sure other places, but that's where it's primarily sourced. Um, and then there is Jasmine Sandback, uh, and that is known to have a more, so the, the first one I talked about often has a greener, um, citrusy, floral, bright scent, but um, Sandback is what is, tends to be creamier, more animalic, and it's often what is used, I believe, in tea. Um, so anyways, just to give a little background, but it is quite versatile. So I'm just gonna jump right in. I have about, I think, 13 cents that I'm gonna to talk to you about. Um, and I'm gonna go kind of in order of how, when they were created. So um, one of my first perfume loves, uh, and I just remember it being, I think in the late 80s, early 90s, I smelled this early 90s, I think, in the winter and just like huffing my wrist over and over again, being like, I can't get over how good this is. And that is um, Guerlain's uh, Samsara. This is an older bottle. I think this is like a 2000s kind of era bottle. And then I have, this is the Eau de Parfum, and this is an older Eau de Toilette. Um, I think this is one of the greatest things ever created. <laughs> and again, it's not for everybody. It's, uh, it's quite a composition. Um, and it is, it was created by Jean-Paul Paul Guerlain. It's described as an amber woody, which I actually think is a, is a fair description. Um, it is quite a composition though. Um, the notes are ylang lang, peach, bergamot, green notes, and lemon. Those are the top notes. The mid notes are iris, jasmine, narcissus, orris, rose, violet, and the base uh, notes are sandal, sandalwood, vanilla, iris, amber, tonka, and musk. I mean, this scent basically just has everything I love in one. Very, very jasmine dominant. Um, gorgeous thing. I mean, to me, this smell, it, it makes me think about faraway places. It makes me think about 
Um, it's very exotic and erotic to me. It is just so cool. So Samsara by Guerlain. And actually, I should have mentioned first, before Samsara came, another Guerlain that I think um, highlights Jasmine really nicely, and that is Jargon, Jargon's Day Bagatelle. I talk about this a lot in my channel. I just love it. Um, it was made in 1983 by John Paul Guerlain. Um, and I would call this, I'm not going to give you every note. There's tons of notes in this. It really is, to me, a, a garden scent. And you get all parts of the garden from, uh, there's aldehydes in this. It makes it almost sunshiny. Um, it's got this brightness. Um, it has uh, every flower you can imagine, but what stands out to me is like a lemony scent, jasmine, neroli, so the brightness of kind of like orange and orange flower stems, um, and then you get like a full garden with greens, um, but again, nicely highlighting jasmine. This is a very, very bright kind of take on jasmine. So Jardins de Bagatelle, wonderful. Um, next. Gosh, okay. Um, I, f for those of you who don't know, I struggle, and I'm not the only one. Um, I like most things. I'm actually, I have a crazy wide, um, diverse um, interest in perfumes. There are not many things I don't love. However, um, I struggle with perfumes by Terry Mugler. Um, I know people are crazy about Angel and Angel Muse, and neither of those work for me. Um, they just, they... And I love a strong perfume. Like, I'm crazy about a strong perfume, but they outlast me. They just, I can't do it. However, Alien is kind of like on the right day I love. Alien, um, for those of you who aren't aware, this was first created in 2005. Um, the uh, nose uh, the nose is where uh, Dominique Rothion, who is amazing, I'll talk about him a little bit more in a minute, and Laurent Briere, um, the the notes are simple in this, but I don't I don't trust what's online. So the notes they say are top notes, jasmine, mid notes, woody notes, and the base amber. Um, this is a trite, striking, striking scent, and until it was created, there was nothing like it. And sadly, part of the reason I have a hard time with Alien is I feel like so so many perfume scents are trying to smell like Alien, and I think part of that is because it's striking, it's really beautiful, it's full, heavy. Um, I really, really love, so Alien, there are days I love it and then there are days I kind of can't do it. But I love the flanker called Alien Fusion. Now it's interesting because this does not have kind of just the base notes of Alien and then some things added. But this is what makes me distrust the three note ingredient list of this because actually this, this has like, I don't know, 12 notes or something much more complex. And it has things like spices like ginger and I want to say cinnamon and it has like way more orange blossom. But what's strange is they definitely smell similar and so I definitely think there are more than three notes in the original Alien. And the reason I bring this up is um, Jasmine is not listed as a note in Alien Fusion but I still get Jasmine in this and I love it. It is not quite as bombastic to me as the original Alien. It's a little sweeter and it has a little more like soft spice, like I get the cinnamon through this, but kind of gently, it's gorgeous. So I would say if you like Jasmine, definitely try Alien if you haven't, but I would say um, I find Alien Fusion to be easier to get along with and just to me a much, much easier reach. So, and um, the original Alien was created in 2005 and then I think Fusion came along much later, like 19, I wanna say. Um, okay. Next is um, Joe Malone, um, White Jasmine and Mint. You can see this is my first bottle in my life. I probably had it for 10 years, but I have worn it a lot. Um, this is just a wonderful, I, okay, so for those of you who don't know, I think that you should wear whatever perfume you like, no matter who it's marketed to. It doesn't matter where you're at the gender spectrum. It does not matter. If you love it, you should wear it. Um, but I would say a lot of these, I would say lean more, um, I bet they're marketed more to women, but I would say that this Joe Malone white jasmine and mint is much more unisex to me, super aromatic. Um, this is such an interesting take on jasmine because so many of these jasmines are kind of heavier, or I would say really, really um, floral, obviously, but there are tons of aromatics in this. Gosh, um, I'll just read you a few. 
There's um, mm, black currant, which to me smells like um, often like vegetal or tomato leaf. Um, there is cedar, gaiac wood, um, there's dried plum, tea, vetiver, um, coriander, cardamom, I mean, mint, bergamot, it just goes on and on. And I get a little bit of all that. It smells to me like a wonderful light jasmine tea with mint. And it's, to me, this is one that you can wear when it's hot as you know what outside. And it just still feels refreshing and wonderful. So white jasmine and mint by Joe Malone. Really interesting, not typical take on jasmine, I find. Okay, next. One of the greatest loves of my life. Sadly discontinued. Oh my God, why did it get discontinued? This is one of, I don't know, 15, whoa, sorry, about 15 bottles maybe that I have backups of, or 15 cents. This is Bulgari's Jasmine Noir. Um, when I first bought this perfume, probably 12, 13 years ago. Yeah, it was created in 2008. That's right. Um, I bought it right after it came out. And I very much, at that time, when something was called noir, I believed that it would be noir. I find that term to be way overused these days. There are things that are called noir or a flanker that is a noir, and it is not dark or gothic or or sultry or thick or you know any of those things. This is all of those things. Um, this you can still find, I think, for like sixty to one hundred dollars a bottle. Um, but soon you will not be able to find it because it's it's been discontinued for a couple of years now. Uh, the noses are Carlos Vaname and Sophie Lobb, um, uh, both incredible perfumers. Just look them up and be amazed. Um, and this I have on my oh, left wrist. It is just to me. This is such a boudoir scent for me and like going out to seduce, honestly. Um, but when it softens, it's just gorgeous. Um, the top notes are gardenia and green notes. The mis mid notes are jasmine, sambac, and almond. The base notes are licorice, tonka, wood, amber, musk, and patchouli. I literally like every single one of those. And the, and the licorice, which I love, and I know it's not for everybody, gives it such a fullness and a depth and a almost gourmand feel but it is just so sultry one of the best scents i've ever smelled I, I can't get enough of it and i just this is another one when i put it on i'm like oh my god it smells good it's so nice so bulgari's jasmine noir r.i.p why why was it discontinued i don't know okay next i think this is an unsung hero uh calvin klein's beauty for those of you who don't know, Calvin Klein is very polarizing for me. There are scents, some of my most, I'm sorry, detested scents are Calvin Klein scents. Um, I hated that thing, continue to hate that thing that happened, I think in the 80s, 90s, where everything started to smell like a dryer sheet and started to smell clean and whatever they perceived as unisex. And that makes me sad because there are many things that are unisex. Uh, the world is unisex, actually, but almost moving forward. Um, I... Whatever they determined as being clean and unisex at that time just smells screechy and awful and some like CK1 and CKB and I can't, I cannot do it. Sorry for those of you who love it. I know a lot of you do and I'm, I'm sure I'm the freak as usual. Calvin Klein Beauty to me is a whole nother story. To me this is a bright, light, beautiful jasmine that you can wear in the heat and it's just, it's to me so chic. This was created in 2010 by Sophie Love again. Um, I just think it's so underrated. It just has a few notes listed. Uh, top note is ambrette, mid note is jasmine, and the base note is ce cedar. Um, ambrette, for those of you not familiar, is um, a seed from the musk mallow plant, I believe, and it smells musky and ambery. Um, so this has a little bit of depth, but is mostly just, I mean, I get just almost straight jasmine. It's so beautiful. Mm, it's bright, uplifting. I would say this is a little screechy when you first spray it, but then it softens and it is just gorgeous. This gets a lot of flack because you gotta respray it. It softens in a few hours, but to me, it's really affordable. I, I find bottles of this for like $20, so totally worth it. Um, really great, chic scent. 
Um, next is another unsung hero, a friend of mine from Montreal, you know who you are, told me about this scent. You can find it so cheaply. Sadly, I got one without a cap. I think I paid like $12 for this. This is Elizabeth Taylor, White Diamonds Night. I think some of the older, uh, although people are on the fence about it for sure, um, some of the older scents, the originals get, um, described as kind of like vintage or even kind of granny scents. Um, I love grandmothers, so whatever. But um, I do not get a super, super vintage feel from this one in the same way I get more of a gourmand feel. This was created in 2016. Um, I could not find a nose for this, but I'm not, uh, the, the notes are top notes, apricot, mandarin, bergamot. The mid notes are night blooming jasmine and freesia, and the base notes are resins, sandalwood, Julian musk. If I had to describe this, it smells to me like jasmine scented apricot custard had a baby with fricka. So it's got like that white floral kind of thing going on, but it also, the, the apricot really comes through and it almost has like a gourmand or pastry feel at times. It's gorgeous, heady. I think you could call this a niche scent and sell it for hundreds of dollars. It is awesome. So Elizabeth Taylor's White Diamonds Night a really kind of gourmand take on jasmine and other things with apricot. Um, next is one of my favorite oils. Hardly anybody, I don't think I've ever heard anybody talk about it actually. Um, this brand is called Maroma, M-A-R-O-M-A. -A. They make one of my favorite oils that is, uh, I think it's vetiver and tonka. It's incredible, it's so good if you like tonka. But this is their night jasmine. I think this runs mm, 13 to $15 online. I've seen it at health food stores too, but to me, this is the most true night blooming jasmine. I mean, it has a couple other notes. I think rose and what else is it? Oh, um, ylang ylang. But I just, I think those things just give it a fullness and it really does smell like what jasmine smells like when it's blooming in the evening. It's just, my God, it's so good. And this to me is one, it's just, it kind of carries you away. It's beautiful. It's so affordable that you, I put a couple drops in my bath water and it's amazing. You can put it in your hair. It is so nice. So Maroma's Night Jasmine, really affordable and wonderful and um, lasts a long time. Okay, two by a, a favorite house of mine that I don't think gets enough love. Um, it's called La Romatica, so like Aromatica with an L. It is, um, the the house is us i forget where it's located um but the nose's name is laredo remsing i believe she's of uh latinx background and and i say that because of the name um and she's just so cool um so there are two scents uh, i i need to purchase a few more of hers i've been trying that i just am crazy about but i'm going to talk to you about brocade and Hello Delicious. These are one ounce bottles, I believe, and I think they run about 40 or 45. Her scents are incredible. She's really known for, there's a gourmand scent of hers called Coffee that smells just like the Indian dessert, but I love her florals. I think she's a master at florals. So first, mm, I'm gonna talk to you about Brocade. So Brocade, um, there is, I get carnation fruit and jasmine. I'm a carnation lover. A lot of people these days think it's out of style. So sad for them. Um, this does have a bit of a vintage feel, and I think the reason I feel that way is because carnation isn't used so much anymore. But it has this, brocade's a perfect description. It's got this kind of fullness or ripeness. So I definitely get carnation. I get like, I don't know if it's peach or apricot and jasmine, and it's just, just beautiful. So brocade. Hello Delicious also is, oh my God, jasmine prominent, but it also has maca lime and has a little musk, I believe. Um, and so it's got this, it to me smells like jasmine and the stem um, and much greener, like definitely that citrus comes through and just gives it kind of a brightness. But when this thing dries down, I'm telling you, this is sexy. Um, it's so uplifting when you first put it on 
And then I was wearing it a few days ago, and I'm, ki I'm not kidding, like six hours in, I just kept smelling my wrist and being like, I cannot believe the dry down on this thing. So Hello, Hello Delicious by La Romatica. Incredible jasmine scent. All right, two more by the independent house uh, Sucre Bay, I think it's pronounced. Now, I asked on my channel what that means, and I've heard two things. One, that it means sugar bee, and I was like, oh, how cute. And then I also heard it means remember death or <laughs> memento mori, which is kind of like um, supposedly seen as a positive thing, but it's kind of like remember to be alive, remember that we all die. Would love to know which one it is. Tried to find it on their site, couldn't. Maybe I haven't looked hard enough, but they make really interesting um, scents. And I'm gonna to talk to you about two. Sadly, one of my favorites with Jasmine was just discontinued. However, I've noticed they tend to th bring things out and back, out and back. So this is Shangri-La. This is an oil. And mm, here's what I love about this. It's gardenia, lychee, uh, red tea, jasmine, and rose hips. I get all of that thing, but I definitely get the jasmine and I get the lychee, which I love. I love that scent. I think it's hard to do well. It often comes off really screechy. I feel like when people try to do it, but in this case, it's beautiful. Shangri-La is a perfect name for it. It's, it feels heavenly or like a fantasy land. It's just so, so good. I hope it comes back. It's real affordable. I think this, I think this is 10 milliliters and I think I paid like 15 or 20 for it and it's just phenomenal. And then I have this tiny, tiny dram. I'm going to end here with something called chloroform. <laughs> I think they called it chloroform because it has kind of knock you out qualities. And the reason they say that is because this uses that indolic jasmine. So for those of you who aren't familiar, um, some jasmine has more indols than others. And indol is kind of like a chemical compound that is in nature or can be chemically made as well in a factory um, or a laboratory. And it has a very, very animalic smell to some people. To some of us, like myself, when I smell it, it smells just full, rich, beautiful, gorgeous. To some, it smells like um, the morning ritual of a cat. So, um, they call this chloroform because I think it could have that effect, those different effects on people. I smell it and I mostly get frangipani, I get musk, and I get um, jasmine, beautiful, heady, gorgeous jasmine. This is still in production. I would like to get a full bottle. So again, called Chloroform by Sucre Bay. So I would love to hear from you. Do some of you love jasmine as much as I do? Um, do you also find that it has a diverse kind of range of feelings or do you get the indols and not like it for that reason? I would love to know more. Um, what sense am I missing here? And um, what would you like to hear more about this fall? Talk soon. Cheers. Bye-bye.